Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're taking a look at how to use our Premiere Pro transitions. So let's jump into it. If you've downloaded any of our transitions, it's really important to understand the different methods by which people are intending to use them. So today, we're going to be going over a few different methods that you can use to get the most out of these Premiere Pro transitions. These are head to tail template transitions, sequential and stacked presets, and adjustment layer presets. So let's open up Premiere Pro and get right into it. So here we are inside of Premiere Pro, and on our timeline already, we have some clips laid down in a basic edit. Right now, they're just cutting from one to the other. But we want to make it look better by adding some of our motion array transitions. Thankfully, this process is really easy. And we're going to show you the different methods intended for you to use. But the first thing that we have to do is to actually import our transition pack that we downloaded. We can import it by going down to the project manager and double clicking. Or you can just drag the Premiere Pro project file right into your project manager as well. It's going to ask you if you want to import the entire project, and I'd recommend doing this, as well as creating a folder for the imported items. Then click OK, and you should see it pop up in your project manager. From here, we can see that when we drop down the folder we just imported, we should have three subfolders, Edit, Finals, and Assets. If we drop down the Finals folder, we can actually look through the transitions that are available for us to use from the pack we downloaded. By double-clicking each of the transition sequences, you can preview what each different transition will look like, with placeholder images to show you how it will change. I like this transition, transition number 3. So the next step is to simply drag and drop that transition sequence over top of the cut between your footage. But here's where things get specific. Once you drop the transition over top of the cut between your clips, you might notice that, for example, clips 1 and 2 are visible at the same time during this transition. And depending on the transition that you're using, these might end up having both of your clips visible throughout almost the entirety of the transition. So to account for this, we're going to use what we refer to as the head to tail method of adjusting your clips. This can be used in any situation, but just ensures that your clips are not going to experience any black frames missing when your transition takes place when it's showing both clips at the same time. You need to start by putting your transition layer up by one layer. Then you need to raise your second clip by one layer as well. And then simply stretch out your clips so that your first clip ends all the way at the final edge of the transition layer, and that your second clip starts at the opposite side here. If your clips don't stretch out or can't go all the way over to the other side, you'll have to actually move it over so that it lines up with the edge of the transition. If you don't, you might end up with portions of black frames that are missing during the transition. Now that that's done, make cuts at the beginning and end of your clips to line up with the start and end of your transition layer, giving you these two different but stacked video layers. Great, now simply copy your first layer here, either with Ctrl or Command C, or by right-clicking and going up to Copy. Then we're going to go up to our Edit folder here and drop it down. Then we need to find the corresponding transition folder, which in our case, remember, is transition number 3. In this folder, we should find our Shot 1 and Shot 2 compositions. Double-click on the Shot 1 composition. You should see a placeholder image here, and you can just click and delete that. And then you can paste your clips in by either going to Edit, Paste, or by hitting Ctrl or Command V. Just make sure that your clip starts all the way at the very beginning of your timeline. Great! So now if we go back out to our main composition and play through our clip, you'll see that the transition is in place. And we're halfway done! Now all we have to do is the same thing for the second shot one layer above. Copy the clip, find your shot 2 composition, and then paste it in, making sure that it's all the way at the very beginning. And now let's go back to our main composition and see what we ended up with. It's a great looking transition that's easily integrated into our edit. And you can see that with this method, the transition is seamless, 
there's no stutter or jump from the transition ending to the regular clips starting to play again. By following this method, you can be sure that your clips will seamlessly transition in a way that makes your video look its best. And guys, that's as easy as it gets for our first transition method. Let's take a look at our second method of using drag and drop presets. The first thing you gotta be able to do is import your presets into Premiere. So how do you do that? Well, it's actually incredibly simple. First, know what the preset file you're working with looks like. If your transition pack comes with a preset to install, it should look like this here. And once you found it, keep in mind where it's located. Because inside of Premiere, we're going to be going to our effects panel. From here, we can right click our presets box, and we have an option to import the preset. If we click it, now we can select our presets from our computer. And once we select it and hit OK, they're installed into our effects panel. Great! There's a bunch of different categories, and multiple transitions found within each of those categories. But you should also notice that each of these transitions has two versions. It has an in version and an out version. These outs and ins refer to the outgoing and incoming clips. The out versions of the preset are intended for the first clip because the transition is going out of the first clip. And the in transition presets are for the second clip because the transition is bringing us into that second clip. So to use these, we simply need to find the corresponding in and out presets for the same transition, and then drag and drop them in. So we'll take fade out noise diagonal 01 and drag it into our first clip. And then we'll take fade in noise 01 diagonal and drag it to our second clip. And with that, here's what our effect looks like. And you can see that with very little effort, we have a great looking transition. So we just added these presets to a set of clips in sequence without really having to make any changes to them. But the next situation we're gonna go over is where you want to stack your clips to make the transition presets work more effectively. The first transition that we just tried worked really well in sequence, but there's other transitions that might not work as perfectly with your clips just back to back. We have a clean glass preset here and we're just gonna take an out version and drag it onto our first clip. And we can see that the effect doesn't look very good because there's this black chunk in the middle. And even when we add the in preset on the other side, it still doesn't look very nice. With transitions like this one, you can actually just add either the in or the out versions to one of the clips and the entire transition will still be complete. But to accomplish this, you're gonna need to stack your clips so that one is on top of the other, and there's a little bit of overlap where both clips are technically playing at the same time. So if we leave the out preset still on this piece of footage, and then just drag it up one layer, and overlap it with the next piece of footage, the result is that we get a really clean looking transition. It's really that simple. All you have to do is stack and overlap your clips slightly so that your first clip is over top of your second clip. Then as long as you're using the out preset, your transition will look awesome. But it doesn't just have to be the out transition with your first piece of footage. You can actually do the same thing with the in transition for your second piece of footage, as long as your second piece of footage is placed over top of your first. Now when we drag and drop our in preset, the transition works just as well. And the choice is totally yours whether or not you want to use the out preset or the in preset. As long as you have the correct piece of footage over top and overlapping, you can really use either one. Now to wrap it all up, we're just going to take a look at our final type of transition, which are adjustment layer presets. I'm just going to quickly import the presets that we're going to be using for this type. And right off the bat here, you can tell that these transition presets are a little bit different. If we take a look at some of the examples, we can see that these transitions are just individual transition presets with no in and out versions. It's all just one preset. This is your cue to know that these are presets intended to be used on an adjustment layer. So to start, you're gonna need to create an adjustment layer to add over your footage. Go to your project manager and right click on it and then go down to new item, adjustment layer and click okay. Now take that adjustment layer and drag it over top of the cut between your two clips. 
try and make it so that the middle of the adjustment layer is over top of the cut between the two clips. And the length of your adjustment layer is going to dictate the total length of the transition. The shorter you make your adjustment layer, the faster your transition will occur. And the longer you make your adjustment layer, the slower your transition will occur. Now let's just drag and drop the preset onto your adjustment layer. And that's it! Nice! It's a really easy way to work with transitions. And if you want to adjust the timing and make it either faster or shorter, you can just delete the transition and resize your adjustment layer and drop it in again. Making your adjustment layer shorter will make the transition happen faster. And making your adjustment layer longer will make the transition take place over a longer time. And now to finish it all off, I'm just going to quickly show you all of the transitions that we worked on. And guys, that's it. Those are the different methods that you can use to get the most out of your Motion Array Premiere Pro transitions. I hope you found this video helpful. If you had any other questions about our products or about Premiere Pro, After Effects, or even filmmaking in general, all of our tutorials can be found right here at motionarray.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thank you.